Item number SCP-7157, Object Class Archon, Special Containment Procedures. While direct containment of SCP-7157 Alpha and or Omega would be feasible, doing so would carry the risk of either party perceiving that the Foundation has taken military action against them. In other words, if SCP-7157 Alpha were contained or otherwise hindered, the Valrathian Corporation would dissolve the Cartagena Agreement and launch a direct offensive on several critical Foundation sites. Likewise, interference with SCP-7157 Omega would be a violation of the Treaty of Cagnazzo, resulting in a PK-class extra-dimensional diplomatic breakdown scenario and other punitive actions from the Three Moons Initiative. Simultaneous containment of both entities would carry the risk of both organizations unifying against the Foundation. Containment efforts will be focused on limiting public exposure to the ongoing Hongan event. Foundation agents in the government of Turkmenistan have diverted local transport away from the Hongan event. In addition, Foundation web callers have been tasked with excising any information about SCP-7157 Alpha and Omega from the internet. Since April 28th, 2019, the Hongan event has taken place in the Kurkum Desert, primarily in area 74 kilometers to the southwest of Tashikus to Monistan. Constant negotiations would be maintained with both organizations to ensure that the event does not move to populated areas a fourth time. In the event of more contact with local communities, Mobile Task Force Epsilon 6 Village Idiots will be dispatched to the affected areas to assess the damage and distribute amnestics as needed. At the conclusion of the Hongan event, the surviving SCP-7157 instance will be reclassified August and contained by their respective organization. Description SCP-7157 refers to a pair of bipedal remote-controlled military constructs, both of 57 meters in height and weigh approximately 120,500 kilograms. They are primarily constructed of a unique and unknown metallic substance filled with nanotechnology that regenerates most damage sustained. Other features include six railguns, light at a cruising speed of 249 kilometers per hour, and running at a top speed of 104 kilometers per hour. The full extent of their capabilities is unknown. The power source of both constructs is an anonymous form of energy known as Gauss. Gauss is a word of Corbynese origin, which literally translates to both open wound and reluctant gift. The only differences between the two constructs are their origin and aesthetic features. SCP-7157 Alpha belongs to the Falraven Corporation, who have given it the code name Arvindale. Its color scheme is primarily black and gold. SCP-7157 Alpha was built on October 26, 2017, and saw active duty in a Falraven campaign in Redacted. Its operator is only known as Skullmode, a member of the Valkyrie Combat Unit. Skullmode is quadriplegic from a battle in 2015. She controls Orvindale through no linking to stay on active duty. SCP-7157 Omega belongs to the Three Moons Initiative, who have given it the code name Old Glory. Its color scheme bears the colors of the initiative flag, white, orange, black, and teal. Its operator is Sergeant Katrina Valdez, a veteran drone pilot based out of Corbinet. A female operator was chosen as per the conditions of the Hong Kong event. Addendum Escalation On January 19, 2019, the entire staff of a Falraven staging area in Iceland was terminated via multiple impaler events in succession. When questioned about this, SCP-2578-D responded with the following email. 
Foundation, I see my little kerfuffle in Iceland hasn't gone unnoticed. Not to worry, this has nothing to do with my primary function. Even if it did, it would be kind of silly for Falrafin to operate a school for would-be dictators or something. I digress, here's what's actually going on. Falrafin is currently in the midst of the most brazen extraterrestrial copyright infringement operation that the Three Moons Initiative has ever faced. The Old Glory series of drones is an icon of human resilience and ingenuity forged by the cruel wilderness of Corbinic. These Falvathan malcontents seem to have stolen its blueprint. As you can probably infer, the negotiations phase of our little spat has been less than successful. On a related note, this would be a very good time for the Foundation to start piling around with what Eternal President Nang has just designated a Tier 4 crime ring. That was not a threat, but in approximately three emails from now, it would be. You are watched. You are protected. You are on thin ice. Three Moons Initiative Following this, the Foundation reached out to Val Raven. This was the response. How comforting. With the degree of importance your duties hold to the world's survival, one would think the Foundation would be a twinge less prone to falling for the lies of Jellicoists. In the Initiative's efforts to keep Val Raven from committing such crimes as successfully doing our job and not providing free labor, they are truly outdone themselves of this little scheme. Point 1. Shield is a sign of the oven dealt from our sacred archives. Point 2. Claim without evidence that it's been theirs for millennia. Point 3. Use it as an excuse to have their spacecraft remove us as a threat. But I suggest a better use of your time. If you pass along a few crucial files pertaining to our mutual friend, we could have the globe removed of the influence of this bizarre spider coat in less than a week. If you need more of incentive, here's a code you may be familiar with. Activation code for the on-site nuclear warhead at Site-19. Think it over, the high table. The following April, the Foundation agreed to mediate this dispute at Site-59. The resulting meeting lasted 37 seconds before the representative of Falraven's high table challenged the initiative ambassador to a home gun, an ancient Norse custom of dueling. Falraven uses a modified version of this in modern times. Between their version of SCP-7157 and one of the initiatives, the winner of the duel would maintain legal rights to use SCP-7157. After 20 days of deliberation, the initiative begrudgingly agreed to these terms. A duel in proper, which has been labeled the Homgon event, started on April 28, 2019, due to both constructs anomalous energy munition source and regenerative capabilities, the duel still continues to the present day with neither party making significant headway. Incident Log Hongkong Event Day 603 Date December 21st, 2020 Time 12.05 AM Greenwich Mean Time Plus 5 Begin Log Alpha and Omega are in a crouching position approximately 200 meters from one another. Smoke seeps from both constructs. They have sustained heavy damage and are in the process of nanite regeneration. The loudspeakers on Omega suddenly switched on. It's the voice of Colonel Evan Everson of the initiative. Time out! Skarmo does not respond. Why are we doing this? It's almost Christmas! Your Nazarene is dead! Uh, okay, that's on me. It's almost you! A time of peace and togetherness! And here we are. You speak like a poet, if only you didn't fight like one. Now, now, I'm not the one fighting here. This is obvious, milk stranger. This, but this is ridiculous. This whole fight. What day are we on now? Over 600? It should never have started. It's a gratuitous waste of resources on both sides. Then run. Now see, there's the sticky wicket. Do you even know what energy source we're using? Gods. Blood of the gods. Blood of a god, yes. Our god. The color of the impenetrable. Alpha suddenly twitches violently. 
Do you understand the gravity of the situation now? Every gas powered machine in existence, even an unapproved one, is another needle in the reaver's veins. I have no idea how you acquire direct access to his undying lifeblood, but to have it powering our enemies is heresy of the worst sort. It's old things, blood, you freaking abobate. You know what? Okay. I will acknowledge the possibility that rumors of Durakara and his wisdom may have inspired some Nordic mythology, but it's like a game of telephone. Some details get lost in translation and... Skarmoot spends the next five minutes screaming while unleashing volley after volley of rail gun charges into Omega. As a result, Omega is unresponsive, but Alpha's rail guns have been warped from severe overheating. Both constructs need more time to repair. After a brief silence, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add anger management therapy to your petition committee file, Miss Gumot. Screw you! There are no therapists in Valhalla! I have it on good authority that... Everson's mic suddenly cuts off. The voice of Omega's operator replaces him. Okay, that's just about freaking does it. I scum mother or whatever hinger dinger jerkin crap they're calling you. I haven't been able to get a word in for 603 days. That ends now. I will rip out your spine and... Yeah, yeah, wipe your ass with it and drink beer out of my skull and then save my bubblehead collection. Pro tip, if you actually want to wrestle our Jimmy, say, I'll put another product line on your Luna card. None of those words are in the hover mouth. That's great. Hey, you know what else you don't have in front of Enough license plates. And as soon as you get here, that's the first thing even the most innocent person in your goddamn bird company is going to be stamping for the next century. Let me check the newsletter. Yeah, you are a minimum of type 8 purgatorial candidates as of two months ago. Confirmed. You fight for paperwork. At least we fight for something. You do what you're told for money. That puts you on a job category I'm not allowed to describe under our current rules of engagement. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to find a stack of 50 Lunari notes to toss at you until you freak off at. The loudspeaker suddenly switches back to Iverson. He apologizes sincerely for the conduct of Sergeant Fowders. Disciplinary action has been taken, and we should clarify she does not speak for the entire Three Moons Initiative. Put her back on! That's the closest thing you've done to real damage! And all.